Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the man, the mission, the myth. In view of the recent criticism from within Pakistan, I need to bring to your notice a news item from India. The Guru Gram administration on Tuesday, 2nd November 2021, withdrew permission to offer namaz at 8 out of 37 designated sites. An official statement from the district administration said the permission was cancelled after an objection from local people and the resident welfare association. Consent from administration is necessary for namaz, it stated. It further said that namaz could be offered at any mosque, Eidga or at a private or designated place. In course, if local people have objections at other places also, Permission shall not be given there to Gulf News, 4th November 2021. This is where we find religious freedom pitted against religious domination. The ability to deny permission is domination. The aspiration of Muhammad Ali Jinnah and the All India Muslim League was to gain religious freedom. The aspiration of the ulama who opposed the Pakistan was religious domination. The latest result is before us in the shape of the Sialkot lynching. This reminds me of what Andrew Roberts wrote. Andrew Roberts. Certainly, Pakistani moderates feel that a proper appreciation of the role of Jinnah in the West would itself be a huge propaganda victory for those of them who are struggling against the DN the third fundamentalism which threatens to engulf their country. Now, what uh, has uh, the Muslim League and uh, the founder been criticized most for is the two-nation theory. Now, I am giving you a brief survey of the two-nation theory. Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan, who used to say that Hindu and Muslims are two eyes of a bride. After the language movement, Hindu, Hindi, Urdu conflict began to say that there are two nations in India, Muslim and Hindu. Then I read out every community is entitled, even bound to organize itself, if it is to live as a separate entity. After inspecting, inspecting the Hindu Mahasabha camp at Sabarmati, this is Mahatma Gandhi. There is one point more which has been troubling me of late and one about which I have want you to think carefully and that is the question of Hindu-Muslim unity. I have devoted most of my time during the last six months to the study of Muslim history and Muslim law and I am inclined to think it neither possible nor practicable. Lala Lajpat Rai to C.R. Das, Indra Prakash, a review of the history and works of the Hindu Mahasabha and the Hindu Sangatan movement, New Delhi, 1938. Akhil Bhartiya. Three. Now we come to Mr. Jinnah. The Hindus and Muslims belong to two philosophies, two different philosophies, social customs and literature. Muhammad Ali Jinnah, Lahore, 23rd March, 1940. Number four, let us bravely face the unpleasant fact. There are two nations in India, the Hindus and the Muslims. Vinayak Damodar Sabarkar, cited in Beverly Nichols, Project on India. Bombay Thacker and Company, 1944, page 185. 5. There was no chance of Hindus there. By here, there means Bengal. There was no chance of Hindus there agreeing to put themselves under permanent Muslim domination. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru in Nicholas Mansur et al., The Transfer of Power, 1981, volume 10, page 1013. Now, I have cited Muhammad Ali Jinnah's two-nation theory 
Now see how he explains this two nation theory to H. P. Hodgson, the Reforms Commissioner, the person who has written the Great Divide. Now Mr. Jinnah said, each minority, whether Hindu or Muslim, will have its essential rights of language and so forth protected, but it will have to reconcile itself to being a minority. The strain will be relaxed because the Hindus in Muslim areas will no longer feel they have this enormous mass behind them, nor will the Muslims feel that they have no one behind them and must always be ruled by a Hindu majority. Weightage of these minorities shall no longer be necessary. Waheed Ahmed, The Nation's Voice, Karachi, Khaiz Azam Academy, 1999, Volume 4, pages 831 to 834. In other words, M.A. Jinnah did not favor a watertight separation. Rather, he envisaged two federations, one with a Hindu and one of them with a Muslim majority. Minority rights assures in both federations. We belong to a country, a nation whose right to existence is constantly challenged. I have migrated from India and when I took up a teaching career, I decided to probe its antecedents. My pre-doctoral paper was the Raja of Mahmud Abad, a political study. My doctoral dissertation is published as Liaqadir Khan, his life and books. And finally, in the discipline of Pakistan studies, I wrote this book, M.A. Jinnah, The Outside View for which we have here the third edition. I feel, being responsive to students, readers and scholars, that I must explain the reason. As H. V. Hodgson explains, there were three parties to what he called the Great Divide, the British, the Indians and the Pakistanis. I decided to explore their writings. I found no full-length British book on M.A. Jinnah, only some papers read as the Jinnah Centennial in 1976. However, other writers from the English-speaking world had contributed. William Stafford Metz, The Political Career of Muhammad Ali Jinnah. This was uh, defended in 1952, but published in 2010. Oxford University Press. Then, Hector Bolitos, creator of Pakistan, not only his official biography, but all the material he had not been able to put in a book, they were published in a volume called In Quest of Jinnah. Then Stanley Walpert's Jinnah of Pakistan and finally Ian Bryant Wells, Ambassador of Hindu Muslim Unity. In between, I surveyed two volumes of paper on Qaeda Asam. I then went to Indian writers on Jinnah. There are too many to mention here. I can mention only two, Kanji Dwarka Das, the most indispensable writer on Jinnah, and S.K. Majumdar's Jinnah and Gandhi, their role in India's freedom, which is the first revisionist account. When it came to Pakistani writers, I had become tired and gave an introductory pass and reviewed only Mehrun Nasa Ali's Jinnah on World Affairs. This was the first edition of Muhammad Ali Jinnah, The Outside View. The second edition was occasioned by a speech of Dr. Parvez Hudboy and the third edition by the books of Professor Ishtiaq Ahmed and Yasser Latif Hamdani. And as a whole, I found Indian writers more appreciative of Jinnah than Latter-day Pakistani writers. During my explorations of writings on Jinnah, I found him often compared to three leaders. Mahatma Gandhi as a leader of the Indian Freedom Movement, Maulana Azad as a leader of Indian Muslims, and A.K. Fazlul Haq as a leader of Bengali Muslims. I had written all the three of them before. I began my study of Jinnah, so I included my articles and review articles on them in the book. Very recently, a Pakistani anchor asked a Pakistan lady, both of whom I could not identify, whether Muhammad Ali Jinnah had divided India to satisfy his personal ambition. Recently, Professor Ishtiaq Ahmed has termed Jinnah, I quote, the villain of the piece who bears most responsibility for the bloody partition of India, which claimed more than a million Hindu, Muslim and Sikh lives Jinnah, his successes, failures and role in Indian 
गुरगांव पेंगुन रैंडम हाउस 2020 अनकोट द इंप्रेशन इज बीइंग परसेंटेज परसिस्टेंटली गिवन दैट द राइट्स वर अ कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ पार्टीशन वेयर इज द पार्टीशन वाज अ कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ राइट्स Here is what Jinnah's contemporary, even his ad- adversaries, recorded: the Secretary of State, Lord Pethick Lawrence, in 1947. He said uh, he was coming to believe that Gandhi did not care whether two or three million people died, and would rather they should than he should compromise. Peter Clark, the last hundred days of the British Empire, London, Penguin, 2008, page 453. There is an account of the Viceroy Lord Wavell that when in August 1946 he asked Mahatma Gandhi and Pandit Nehru to confirm to the cabinet's delegation's interpretation of its own plan. I quote, I quote Lord Wavell. Nehru got very heated. Gandhi said that if a blood bath was necessary, it would. Come about in spite of non-violence. Pendle Moon edit. We will the Viceroy's Journal, Oxford, 1974, page 341. Jawaharlal Nehru had said, "I would rather have every village in India put to the flames than keep the British army here after 15th August." Leonard Mosley, The Last Days of the British Raj, New York, Harcourt, Brace and Bird, 1962. Page one forty nine. All the above reactions were in the backdrop of the cabinet mission plan of sixteenth May nineteen forty six, in which partition was to be avoided. The Indian National Congress and the All India Muslim League had agreed to a plan where there would be three groups of provinces with a common centre dealing with only foreign affairs, defence. and communications necessary for defense when sir stafford cripps learned that congress had accepted the cabinet mission plan he wrote in his diary and i quote to stafford cripps i only hope that they have not filled it up with qualifications and reservations so that it really amounts to a rejection unquote peter clark offside page 451 and this is exactly what happened And on 10th July, Nehru went back on the agreement, leading Sardar Patel to call it Nehru's emotional insanity. The cabinet mission plan had grown out of three proposals put before the cabinet. One, Jawaharlal Nehru's letter to Sir Stafford Cripps of 27th January 1946, Maulana Azad's letter to Patrick Lawrence of 28th April 1946. The All India Muslim League proposals of 12th May 1946. When Jinnah had made a concession of sovereignty, when he agreed to a common centre between Hindu majority and Muslim majority provinces, why did the Congress resign? Who was uncompromising? One lie, last eyewitness scene recounted by Inam Aziz, who covered the 29th June 1947 All India Muslim Council meeting. He reported Jena saying, "I quote Jena, I have finished my work. I am like a field marshal who is no longer needed after his army has become victorious. His duties are then transferred to other citizens who are expected to take charge." Unquote. At this point, Maulana Hasan Mohani rose up and said in a loud voice, "This is not possible. This is Hasan Mohani. This is not possible. We reject your decision." Stop Press, Oxford, 2008, page is eight and nine. The Akali Azam had actually nominated the Nawab of Bhopal to be the Governor General of Pakistan. Hasrat Mohani preempted him. There was no ambition. There was no pride. Thank you.